Welcome to Better Boating in Connecticut. We are here at the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection's Marine Headquarters. I'm Yolanda Cooley and I'm here with Eleanor Mariani, the Director of the Boating Division. And today we're going to talk about getting your boat ready. We're all a little anxious to uh, get back out on the water this year. The sun is shining and we want to give you some useful tips on some things that you should check on your on your boat um, before you launch this season. So we're going to give you a little brief overview of some of those things that we feel are important to have a safe day on the water. So the first thing um, that we'd like for you to inspect are your batteries. If you have one or two uh, make sure that um, that they're been charged before you launch your boat. Sometimes they uh, lose their charge over the winter from sitting. We want to make sure that you inspect the water levels. If it's not a maintenance-free battery, um, add some distilled water if the levels are low. You also want to check the uh, battery terminals, um, look for corrosion, uh, take the terminals off, uh, scrape off the corrosion with a wire brush. Um, that corrosion will um, cause some problems for you if, if it's not properly taken care of. You, um, the increased resistance from the corrosion will stop the flow of electricity. So you go to start up the engine and you'll have nothing. Uh, something else to um, think about is the fuel system. Um, boats have gasoline fuel um, and diesel fuel as well. Gasoline uh, poses a little bit um, a more of a risk for uh, some of the boaters out there. It's highly combustible and there's some um, other safeguards that we'd like to uh, make you aware of so that you don't have um, an accident on your boat from your fuel system. And one of those is, you know, if you have accessibility is to check to make sure that the fuel fill is properly grounded. Um, we want to make sure that your fuel tank is properly vented. And you want to make sure that all those hoses and connections are properly clamped as well. And those hoses need to be flexible. They need to be marine grade and they also need to be U.S. Coast Guard approved. You want to inspect those, all those fuel lines for any visible cracking. Ensure that they're well supported and strapped to the boat to ensure that there's no chafing that um, takes place when you're underway, rocking and rolling. Um, we don't want to have uh, fuel leaking right into your bilge, which poses another problem for you. We want you to inspect your uh, fuel tank um, to make sure there's no corrosion, weld cracks, uh, any leaks, the fittings and connections, and any kind of metal fatigue or abrasions. Uh, and also, um, an important, um, we want you to change your fuel filter too, and to uh, keep a couple of spares on board. And did you want to say anything about um, the gasoline? Yeah, so one of the things to remember with the gasoline, with the ethanol now, is that it has much it has more water in it so you want to make sure a lot of times it's going to be really important to add a water separator if you don't already have one and if you do have a water separator make sure you have an extra um, cartridge so that if you need to change it you can do so um, the other thing with the uh, if you say you have an outboard engine and a small tank on board, you know, you really need to watch out for the hose and make sure that it's not getting uh, soft and, um, and kind of uh, sticky. <laughs> if it's sticky, you need to replace it. Okay. Thank you, Eleanor, for that. Um, along with um, the fuel system, we want to make sure that your bilge blower hoses, um, make sure there's no leaks, um, ensure that they're properly clamped to the ex exhaust uh, vent. And also, while we're talking about the bilge, we also want you to inspect your bilge pump, uh, make sure that the float is um, flowing up and down, make sure that the um, impeller inside the pump is free of any lint, dog hair, Oh, it loves to accumulate in the bilge and then get sucked up by the, the, the bilge pump as well and leaves <laughs> as well. Um, so something to um, also we want to talk next about the different engines and getting your engines ready for uh, launching. Uh, for inboards, we want you to inspect all those cooling hoses and fittings. Uh, look for rot, leaks, and cracking. Uh, they should be snug and double clamped as well. 
um, clean and replace any air filters that you have and check uh, all the fluids. You want to check the, the oil um, for the engine. You want to check the coolant um, levels as well, transmission fluids and hydraulic steering fluids. You're going to check all your fan belts um, for any tension or wear. Um, it's always good to have some of those uh, spares on board too. Uh, and you're going to check your raw water and fresh water pumps. Uh, your impeller should be replaced um, annually. And it's always good uh, if you're handy to have a spare on board as well um, in case you burn up an impeller while you're underway. And, um, and then I would start your engine, you know, before launching as well. That's really important. Um, inboard's uh, a little bit more difficult to do that, but if you have an outboard, you can um, start your engine up with a garden hose at home and some earmuffs um, that you... And you may, you could show them right here. So uh, generally you're going to put, put the, uh, yeah. the earmuffs uh, here or here and you can and start it up. Um, adding the water and then start the engine up. Uh, the other thing that we wanted to mention is making sure that you put the plug in uh, to your boat because almost all boats have plugs. If you're trailering your boat, you typically take it out uh, when you're trailering it. And at the end of the season, if you have a, a larger boat, you will take the plug out. So don't forget to put that back in because um, the boat can sink. Okay, and then um, just to move on from an inboard, we want to talk about, you know, our outboards here or an I.O., the inboard outboard um, engine. Um, something that fails on those inboard outboard drives is the uh, bellows. Um, and that's where the uh, stern drive uh, attaches to the transom and the bellows are there. It's a rubber gasket that commonly, if it's not replaced, um, will fail. It does fail and water uh, comes in and your boat sinks at the dock when you don't even know it. So you need to check those, those bellows uh, for cracks um, and deterioration and replace as necessary to avoid you know, flooding and sinking. Before we get off uh, the subject of flooding and sinking, I just wanted to mention, so every year we owe, you know, in the springtime, we will get accidents where um, the boat floods and, and sinks. Uh, it may even lead to fatalities. We have had that situation in, in several times. So we really want to remind people that when, they're, when you're checking the hoses, Anytime there's water coming into your boat and those hoses come up, you really need to check to make sure that those hoses are in good shape and that they're double um, uh, sealed. So please, that's an important component. And that you know leads us to the seacocks as well yeah. because you want to make sure um, that those seacocks where the water is coming in from, um, that those are freely um, working, that you can open and close them, they're well lubricated, they look like they're not rusted, and um, they're not going to fail while you're launched. Um, on the outboards, you want to check the power steering and all the power trim oil levels. Um, those usually those hydraulic trim fluids are usually generally changed prior to um, being wintered and you want to check the lower unit lube level that should be nice and clean and not creamy um, any kind of white cream inside means that there's waters getting in there some somehow and that's not good it's going to corrode everything uh, and lead to failure of your of your um, lower unit uh, we want you to replace uh, any worn zincs and the importance of um, the zincs, Eleanor, would you like to expand on that? Sure, so on, on the outboard, for instance, there's a, a zinc right here, and then typically there's a zinc um, right under this unit here. And you can go to the, your marine store, they will tell you for whatever engine you have, what zincs you will need. Um, a lot of times the manufacturers have actual packages, you know, kits that you can just buy. And the reason that the zincs are so important is because if you have different metals on your boat, and generally they mix different metals, aluminum and bronze or, or different metals, each one will corrode at a certain rate. Um, and what will happen is it, one metal will corrode over the other. 
What they typically do now with the, the zinc is that is a metal that's called a sacrificial anode or sacrificial metal. And what happens is that will corrode and will leave your other metals alone. So a lot of times on an inboard engine, you'll see on the shaft of the, uh, the propeller shaft, a, a zinc that gets clamped onto it. That is to protect the, the propeller shaft. So those zincs are really, really important. And depending on uh, the, you know, how warm the water is, um, and uh, how, you know, if there's pollution in the water, or if you're in an area where there's a lot of um, a conductivity from other boats, um, that can corrode those even faster. So. It's a really wise idea to check that mid-season also. All right, thank you, Eleanor. So, we you know, we've just to reiterate, we've gone over the electrical systems, checking the batteries. We've gone over the uh, bilge uh, systems as well, um, the fuel system, the engine systems. And just I wanted to quickly uh, point out um, if you have a water system on board, too, that you know, has been winterized, you'll need to flush out the uh, antifreeze that um, that was uh, in there from over the winter. So we're going to just go to um, the next uh, part of the boat to inspect is the hull. And we want to uh, ch have you check for weak spots, um, check to see if there's any blisters on the bottom. Uh, sometimes when you hit bottom, if you're beaching the boat, you'll come up with some gel coat um, scratches and nicks. Uh, we need to make sure that those are sealed properly. We don't want you to have water intrusion in your hull that leads to blistering and then it'll cost you a lot of money to have that fiberglass repaired. So make sure you sand and paint the bottom and check for those. Uh, let's take a break now for a public service announcement, and we'll be back in just a minute. Thank you. We love it. It's so much fun. <laughs> it's exciting. Esto es vida. Why do I have to wear a life jacket? We wear it to be safe. I've got mine on. We're teaching our kids about safe boating. Cogí un pescado así de grande. <laughs> we all love this life. Wear it and love the life. This message brought to you by the National Safe Boating Council. Welcome back to Better Boating in Connecticut. We're here at the DEEP Marine Headquarters in Old Lyme, and we were talking in the earlier about um, preparation for putting your boat in the water. We had talked about the hull. We talked about different um, tips for putting your boat in the water. Um, the importance of the checking your batteries and you know again with the batteries they last three to five years at the latest at the most so you do want to check those batteries and at some point uh, just break down and replace them because you don't want to have to replace them when you're on the water and you you break down um, we were talking about the hull when we left and talking about the need if you're on salt water to paint the boat uh, to make sure that you don't have blisters and things like that. One of the things that you also want to check is that um, it, any through hulls, you want to make sure that, that they're not blocked by either paint or by barnacles because, again, that's going to be really important to the success of your boating day is getting that water in when it, when it needs to cool your engine or whatever. Um, so, again, that's really important. Um, yeah, I wanted to touch quickly on some, you know, if you have a sailboat, some of the things that you need to do to prep. And so with a sailboat, you either have uh, standing rigging, and basically that's the, the shrouds, you know, the, uh, or the stays in the front of the boat that, uh, that hold the mast up. And so that's called standing rigging. One of the things that you want to check with that is uh, that the um, metal that that holds that up the the shrouds uh is in good shape and you want to make sure that there's no what they call fish hooks or or slivers coming off of that because if that's starting to un unwind you really need to replace it because again that is what's holding holding the mast up uh you want to check your turnbuckles uh to make sure that they are in good shape and one of the most important things is when you put the clevis pin in that is the the pin that will hold the stay to 
to your boat or the turnbuckle on um, you, that holds the load. You want to make sure that you always put the pin back in, the, the cotter pin back in, and maybe even replace those uh, if they're in, not in good shape. So you may have circular ones or, or ones that look like a little R. Um, those are really, they look small, but they're very important, and it's really important to have those in good shape because you don't want the turnbuckles turning, and you want, uh, you want that fasten to the, to the boat to be uh, a good hold. So for the standing rigging, those are some of the things you would look at. And then for the running rigging, which is basically the, the ropes, or sometimes the rope will attach to a piece of wire that would be your halyard, um, you want to make sure that those are in good shape. And uh, a lot of times you can just wash the, the lines with you know, soap and water to make sure that they're uh, soft and supple and in good shape. So, you know, those are some of the things that you would want to look at for those. Um, did you have anything that you want to mention before I talk about uh, safety equipment? Just, just quickly, Eleanor. Thank you. Um, the running gear on, uh, you know, some of the bigger, bigger boats that have fixed propellers. We want to make sure that the zincs are are changed on the shafts. That the shafts are turning freely. There's no wobbling um, taking place. Uh, look at the props, do an inspection, make sure there's no dog ears, any dings on those. You want to check your stuffing boxes, have those repacked, um, you know, lubricated, and uh, make sure that there's no um, water coming through. Uh, we don't want your boat to sink at the dock, like I said. And also check your rudders and the rudder posts to make sure that those are, are freely able to be moved freely as well. Um, and just quickly, um, when you have a, a trailerable boat here, we want to make sure that you uh, have um, can get back and forth to the launch safely. So um, first things first, if it's over 3,000 pounds, you have to have um, brakes on the trailer itself. Um, also, you want to inspect the tires, make sure that there's, you know, enough tread. Are there any cracks? Is it enough air pressure, correct air pressure? Um, and don't forget to also inspect your spare tire as well. You want to inspect the uh, bearings on the tires as well, on the wheels, and, um, make sh and repack them and grease them as necessary. Test your lights. Um, those are, you know, submerged in water, salt water, and electricity. Uh, you know what happens there with corrosion. Those, those lights, um, lights also burn out as well. You want to make sure the bulbs are working. Test your winch and also um, inspect the frame. Just look for a general um, deterioration on the frame. And if you see any rust spots, then you should sand that and paint that um, to prevent the f further uh, deterioration of that. Um, and then, Eleanor, would you like to discuss a little bit of the safety equipment that's uh, sure. require, required sure. on board? Yep, I would love to do that. So, one of the things that, um, keep, that you should keep in mind is that if you have running lights on your boat, so for starboard port and your all-around white light, if you have that on the boat, they have to work. You can't say to the Coast Guard if you're stopped or somebody, oh, I'll, I never use them they have to be working. If they're on your boat, they have to be working. So that's one of the first things that you're going to want to check is make sure that uh, that those lights are working. The other thing that um, you are required to have is a sound producing device. Um, so depending on the size of the vessel, it will depend on what type of uh, sound producing device. It could go anywhere from on paddle craft, um, a whistle is, uh, is acceptable. And then as you get uh, to a larger boat, you have to have a horn or a sound producing device uh, that is audible for longer distances. So, you know, check it out. Get on your boat, blow the horn, make sure everything's working. And if it's not, you want to get that fixed before you put it in the water. Um, one of the most important pieces of equipment that, uh, that will save your life are life jackets. Uh, you're required to have a life jacket, one life jacket for each person on board, and they have to fit that person. So if it's a kid, you want to make sure that you read the label on it so that you understand um, what size the life jacket is so that it would support every person that's on the boat. If the boat is 16 feet or, or, or greater, you are required to have a type 4 throwable. Um, a seat cushion works for that. If you go to your local uh, marine store, there's some other 
type fours, the horseshoe. It's basically something that you can uh, to, can toss to somebody that that goes overboard uh, in that unlikely scenario. Um, I'm going to start right out here with a uh, inflatable life jacket. It's something that we certainly recommend. It's easy to wear. Um, it's easy to put on, and it. It is something that uh, can save your life. So, a type. A lot of these are type three. You have to look to see whether it's a type three or five. Um, but one of the most important parts of this now is one of the recommendations for storing them at the end of the season is to remove the cartridge um, from from the the life jacket itself. So when you get in the spring, you want to make sure that that the cartridge is in and. Basically, it just screws in, and hopefully you've put it someplace uh, safekeeping. The other thing is you want to make sure that the green tab is visible. Um, that is required. If, you have, if, it's a red, if the red tab is exposed, you need to uh, go to the store and, and get what's need, what you need to do to get the, the, the green tab showing again. And, you know, even for the, these inflatables, there's different types. Um, one is a manual, and that would mean that should you fall overboard, you would be you would have to pull, jerk the the tab to inflate it, and it would automatically inflate. The other type that we have is um, called an automatic, and that would be there's a little salt tab in there. So if you end up in the water, the salt tab uh, dissolves, and then then this will um, inflate, and then the most um, expensive one, but it's a really good one because you don't have to worry about it getting wet. So uh, you don't have to worry about that salt tub dissolving if you get hit by a wave or something like that or in the rain is um, a hydrostatic. And what that means is you have to actually submerge about two inches before the pressure causes it to inflate. So these are great great things we I mean I wear them on my boat all the time and certainly recommend that everybody do that um, this is a uh, type 2 it is illegal and you'll see many people carry these type 2's one of the things that we suggest is that um, you know they're not that comfortable to wear so our recommendation would be that um, that you get this type 3 which is the vest type and is very comfortable and and it can be used for water sports. So if somebody's tubing or, or um, water skiing, they're required to wear one. Also, if somebody's on a personal watercraft, um, they're required to wear a life jacket. This is a perfect one for them to wear. In fact, we... In fact, we suggest that they do not wear these uh, type 2 because you can sustain injuries if you fall off, if you're on a personal watercraft. Flares is another thing. Uh, you, if you're on a body of water that's two miles or wider, so that's basically Long Island Sound or the mouth of the Connecticut River, uh, or the, excuse me, the mouth of the Thames River, um, you're required to have a vi visual distress signal, uh, commonly known as a flare. And there's a couple of different kinds. You're required by the Coast Guard to carry three, daytime, nighttime. Um, some count as daytime, nighttime. These are very common and um, will count for both. And, and uh, you go to the marine store and you can get them. And one of the things that you need to look at is the expiration date. So once they're expired, uh, you have to get get new ones. Um, there's also a, a, a pistol type and um, what ha you, you get it and you put the flare in here and then you can shoot that uh, in the event that you need it. The thing to remember with this though is that the cartridges that you shoot from here only last like maybe 10 seconds so you have to be uh, you really have to know that help is, is in the near vicinity to shoot this off. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about, the last piece of safety equipment, is um, on, on boats that have inboard engines or um, that have enclosed fuel tanks, so even on an outboard, uh, so for instance on my boat it's an outboard, but 
I have an enclosed fuel tank required to have uh, a, a, um, <laughs> a fire extinguisher. <laughs> The size of the boat will depend on how many of these you need and what size, but generally speaking, to get this ready for the spring, you're gonna look to make sure that the dial on this is in the green spot. That means that it's good. And then the other recommendation that we have is that these are powdered, uh, powders inside of this. So what we require, uh, what we're recommending is that you actually shake this and you may actually have to, you know, hit, hit the bottom to loosen up the compacted powder and uh, make sure that you can hear it and feel it uh, before you put it in your boat. And we do recommend that you, uh, that you secure this to your boat, although it's not required. Alrighty, do you have uh, anything else that you wanted to? Just quickly, I wanted just to um, finalize uh, some, something that we think is very important here at the boating division is to actually schedule a vessel safety check. Um, we will have the, um, you can request a vessel safety check or if you launch at one of our state boat launches, we have boating education assistants there um, that can, can provide a safety check for you. Make sure that your registration is up to date, your decals are properly placed on the boat, um, and we want you to wear your life jackets. It's, it's one of the messages that we keep on sending home to our, our boaters. Uh, it's, it's very important to wear your life jacket. So thank you so much for joining us, yeah. and we hope that you uh, enjoyed our show. Um, our resource is a boater's guide if you have any questions or want to follow up on some of the safety equipment that we talked about here and what the requirements are, and we'll see you the next time. Thank you.